Lynn O'Getta and particularly honourable ministers, governors and uh, High Commissioner Carly. It's lovely to be here in your first outing. Um, my name is Carolyn Blacklock and I'm the acting but not pretending managing director of PNG Power. <laughs> Um, just to make that clear. Uh, PNG Power has, uh, for most of you, I'm not going to go through our 60 plus year history. We, were, um, we, we have always been PNG's only power company. This makes it incredibly important that we're also the best power company. We haven't been that. We are continuing on a journey to become that. Where's the... Where's this? Um, so if you want to just take a quick walk through history with me from about 2002 to 2017, we are one of the few institutions, uh, utility power institutions in the world who managed to go from being an almost green institution uh, with about one in five Papua New Guineans connected to power to now regressing to be primarily a fossil fueled utility and only about um, 13 per cent of our population having access to energy. So it's a pretty incredible regression. All of those years weren't bad years. In fact, it's really been the last 15 years of the 17. So there was a couple of good years at the beginning. Unfortunately for PNG Power, it's had this very unsustainable business model. Um, so when expenditure is more than your revenues, then of course you do what most government institutions around the world have done, and that is to increase tariffs. So now we have a tariff which you can't jump over. It's relatively expensive energy, similar to electricity costs in Australia and Japan, for instance. But of course our people only earn about a 17th of the people of Australia and Japan. So it makes us the least affordable and least connected utility in the world. And that's not a statistic that if we're going to do all of the things that we've heard over the last two days, or we are going to be able to suffer. We really have to fix this company and fix this problem. Um, if you're familiar with electricity, you'll know that we call, when we have a system-wide blackout, we call the restart a black start. Um, and last year was really our black start year. We were down and out, um, losses are nearly 200 million kina when I walked into the business and uh, pretty much a unionised workforce who certainly rightfully trusted their union more than management or their board. There'd been a turnstile. I think I'm, um, I'm luckily the first woman, but um, there had been about 10 different CEOs um, over the same period of time. So pretty much a turnstile of leadership at PNG Power where staff then, of course, lost faith that there was a future and there's about 2,500 staff, so it's a reasonably large workforce and a revenue base of about a billion kina. So it's a big company to fail. And uh, at the start of last year, it was not just technically insolvent, but trading insolvent for about the first six months of the year. We did a restructure. Um, we were pretty lucky to deliver on APEC. And during the APEC period, we put a restraining order on the union from protesting. I'm positive this was just because of APEC, but it enabled us to sneak through a restructure. Um, that restructure went down very well. You know, I'm on record for having sacked 38 people. That's wrong. It's about 72. Um, and we continue to look for opportunities to become more efficient. So our future is really about safe, reliable and financially viable. I'm a very simple girl. We need things that rhyme. And that includes really improving our safety. We're an un unsafe institution. Um, we have around six electrocutions of our community so far this year. All of those relate to unsafe electricity practices. They didn't need to happen. Unfortunately, most of those are older women and young children who touch illegally connected poles. And the reality is that with these sorts of deaths, um, PNG power needs to change. But in addition to that, our workforce also operates unsafely. We'll go through each of these, but really least cost power development is central to us. Unless we start religiously, disciplined wise, following a least cost power development plan, we will go broke. And we'll go broke because everybody wants to own a power station. It's the new thing. Unfortunately, David, for you, no one ever wants to own a road, mate. But um, they do want to own power stations. And 
It should be the mandate of the board of PNG Power who decide what the least cost power development plan is, endorsed by our government, and then implemented by the team and I. Unfortunately, that's not how it happens in PNG. Unfortunately, everybody has a better deal, a different technology, something that we, they think we need. And unfortunately, this has led us to situations where in the past we've signed IPPs, 15-year IPPs, power purchase agreements, uh, on he heavy fuel oil. You know, uh, less than 18 months ago, these machines become operational. We've got to live with that technology and that cost, which is more than the tariff that we charge our clients. We've got to live with that for another 13 years. We cannot afford to continue to muck about with PNG power. If you don't like the least cost power development plan, then government needs to replace me and the board. Otherwise, let's just put our heads down and get on with it, because discipline is what's going to save PNG power. Thank you, Minister. So our path ahead is really driven around reliability, growth and rewiring. We want to become reliable and reliably um, known as PNG Power. We want us to be invisible. I did note this morning in both the Lay and the Port Moresby Chamber didn't raise power as a bad thing. They actually didn't raise it at all. That's the way we would like it. We would really like to just help you operate. <laughs> we. Um, we, I noticed the ADB said the blackouts in Moresby, just because I'm pretty keen on statistics. Uh, we're running at 99.2% reliability for Moresby. Um, this is phenomenal, up from 72% last year. So last year, about two and three days you had electricity, and the other you did not, just to put it into perspective. Now we're down to less than really uh, two days of electrical outages in the whole of the year of Port Moresby. Isolated centres, while everything is about the two big grids in particular, um, we will save and in fact make a lot of money for Papua New Guineans if we fix Ramu and Port Moresby grids and make them reliable. We also understand that energy security, not so much cost, but just ensuring that the lights are always on at Daru, that the lights are always on at Kerama, and that people can go about their businesses. We've also embarked on what we used to call the C centres, we now call isolated centres. But of course the future is D centres. It's really returning power, sorry, returning power to those places that used to have power. If you went to Lake um, Koraba, it had power 15 years ago, it no longer does. If you went to Tufi, Tufi had power, it no longer does. So all of these places do have economic activity. All of these places have social needs and we have an opportunity to go back into those places which much now, because of renewable energy developments, much, much cheaper ways of delivering power. Energy security we just talked about, um, we really, uh, clear that in, for many of our island communities, shipping diesel is no longer um, a, a sensible thing to be doing. So there is some environmental um, issues here as well, but uh, we are we're absolutely keen to remove that. Um, I can see Jim sitting at the back of the room. I guess that's because that's where the door is, mate. <laughs> but uh, of course, we will be diesel dependent in many of these centres for some time. But we would certainly. We are welcoming the opportunity to work with Puma around more efficient fuels. Growth, um, the Electrification Partnership, I'm happy to talk to you some more about this, but uh, this was really a way for us to crowd in grant and low cost money uh, to build out uh, much like David's roads. When we borrow money, however, we're supposed to pay it back. Um, we're supposed to be a profit making institution. So if you're going to join up the least economically able of our community, and there's an awful lot, then you need help from other partner governments. And you can't afford to borrow that from the ADB even or the World Bank. You really do need soft money and very um, cheap grant money to be able to go about that. Uh, it also crowds in good governance. Um, you know, I, I'm an Australian and very proud of that, but it really helps to have the US with us. It really helps to um, crack open the shutters and make sure that we are very transparent in the way in which we do business and the reporting. I cannot tell you how important it is to have the right partners with us at the table. The new industrial customer loads, um, 
we probably know secret, but we've had an active MOU now. We're on the second one with Wafi Golpu. Um, this for us, if you could think of growing the business of PNG Power, the Ramu grid's about 85 megawatts at peak. It's very, very small. Um, Wafi enables us to grow over a 10 year period about 113 megawatts. So these are two good opportunities to pass away as captive power. And we are the only company in PNG who can offer Wafi the cheapest power. Now the question is, how do we make that 99.9% .9 reliable? Because if they're operating in a de, um, underground mine, they clearly don't want to cook people or flood them. And so it's really important, not only that the price is right, but that we're really, really keenly focused on reliability. Rigilis, illegal and free power. Um, unfortunately for Moresby, uh, there is about 33% illegal connections. So one in every three megawatts we produce is stolen, or as I call it, sold for free, because sometimes it's my people who join them up. Um, and they're very good at that, so often these connections are safe. They may be illegal, but they're safe. And so the opportunity for us is to gra uh, graduate those connections up, to make sure that we put a defects notice on them, inspect them, and ensure that they're safe, and then make them formal customers. PNG is a village. It's un Papua New Guinean to steal. It's not Christian to steal. If we're indeed going to be the richest Christian black nation on earth, this sort of behaviour has to stop. And it ain't going to be PNG power or policemen that stop this. This must be an internal drive from within Papua New Guineans. By the way, lay, um, not just colourful shirts and tall, attractive ball guys, but they also only, only 8%, 8% of electricity theft in lay. That's pretty phenomenal. Hagen has the record at over 50%, but it's off such a low base. So the trick is here, what is going on in Lai that, that is, is, um, is helping people um, ensure that they're not stealing energy. The Electrification Partnership, last year we did 18,000 connections. Every year prior to that for the last 16, uh, there was 2,500 connections done. So 2,500 jumped to 18 last year. This year we'll do 30,000. In fact, I'm told that it might be a bit better than that. This is not money coming from anyone at this point other than the New Zealand government, a little bit coming later in the year from Australia. What the um, governments are really helping us with is to become a better institution, ensuring that the financial accounts are remediated, our P&L and balance sheet is not believable, um, that work finishes on the 20th of September. That will at least make us so that we have um, more than just a cash flow to manage this business. And then the electrification plan is being built right now from 2020 to 2030. Lots of conjecture around this, who should go first, when it should be done, what is on grid, what is off grid, all of those things. I think for PNG Power, the trick is to become more efficient, to become more efficient at the institutional level, but also to become more efficient at connections. We have one, we, we copy Australia. And so our standards, our connections, we don't want them to be less safe, but we certainly need them to be less expensive. Settlements into suburbs. We know that public lighting and public electricity is, is really transformational in Papua New Guinea. I encourage you, if you're driving, uh, last week, um, David, I drove from Hagen to Nadzab last Tuesday to Thursday, and we have a few little pilots along the road of where we've hooked up easy pay meters to allow people to do public electricity. And they're buying freezers and they're divvying up freezer space. So today I pay the easy pay meter and I get to use the freezer and then next day somebody else pays the meter and they get to use the freezer. And this is really helping drive small and medium enterprises. But importantly, yesterday we heard that Papua New Guinea suffers the most from five-year-old stuntedness. One of the ways to reduce stuntedness is to increase the consumption of protein. And so we know that these little things like easy pay meters on roadsides, public electrification, can have huge impacts on young kids' lives. We're nearly there. Um, we have not always been known as being um, terribly customer friendly. In fact, uh, when I joined PNG Power, I said, where's the customer service team? And um, they said, the call center's upstairs, but 
Um, there was a flood and it's not open right now, so it's been off for a little while. And then I said, but where is the leader? Oh, well, it's actually part of finance. It's called the revenue team. So we actually didn't really think of customers as customers. We just thought of them as, as a monopoly would, that they've got to come to us. And I think that one of the things hopefully we're rapidly changing is the mindset of our team uh, to really understand that they are, they are warriors for development. These are development actors. They're nation builders. And the way in which they respond to our customers says a lot about us as a country, it says a lot about us as a team, that we actually want to help people, not hinder them. And I think that little simple things like WhatsApp groups, Mr Burns set one up in Lay, that's really helped us to be immediately reactive. Um, a lot of times two and three o'clock in the morning, but we don't mind because our mission is actually to help people make sure that their power is always on. Smart meters for business, uh, we will roll out 7,000. PNG Power is very lucky in that we make 87% of our income from only 7% of our customers. And so 7,000 smart meters funded under a World Bank loan uh, will be deployed by March next year. This helps us ensure that there's a lack of theft, but importantly also that we can monitor and regulate voltage externally. Powering up our country, we, we genuinely believe that we are one of the true building blocks to nationhood. If we are going to connect people to power, they're going to have to pay for it. And right now, if we go out and connect everybody, unfortunately, power is not affordable. So we'll be using donor money to connect homes and businesses who will never probably energise their lines for more than a few hours a week. This would be an extraordinary tragedy. And as an Australian taxpayer, uh, that would obviously be really demoralising for those people who think they're putting money into the hands of good development. So we genuinely need to industrialise our country, create jobs, grow tax bases. Now, whether this is in agriculture with water pumps and alike, irrigation, uh, we really just want to be there available. If people want productive electricity, we want to be the company that they can turn to and deliver that. Rewiring. Um, we, um, we in PNG Power are changing our attitudes. Uh, Alan has done a lot better with this at Air New Guinea, but um, we have a team who I think are fully committed to PNG Power and fully committed to their country. Um, but we still have bottlenecks. We still have people who need an attitudinal readjustment. And so for those people, we continue to work with them. Um, some of them, we, we give up working with them and ask them to go work somewhere else, hopefully not for government. Uh, but we genuinely want a new breed of PNG Power employees. There are 2,500 of us, three expatriates, uh, who all live in the country. We have across the executive team now uh, no difference in salaries and wages. In fact, it's quite funny, but I'm one of the lowest paid workers in the executive team. We, we absolutely um, adhere very strictly that if you're good enough to do the top line job and be an executive general manager, you will be paid exactly the same as your expatriate brother that sits beside you. The least cost power development plan uh, we'll talk to very quickly. This is a very, very simple story. It's boring, as power should be. It means refurbish the hydros. In, in the 1970s and 80s, hydros were installed in Papua New Guinea. Unfortunately, they have diminished, as of the start of last year, to less than 20% of our power generation. They cost less than 1.5 US cents per kilowatt hour. These are incredible natural resources. Anybody who can tell me that we can produce power, whether it's coal or diesel or solar or wind, for less than 1.5 cents is having me on. We are the lucky country. We just need to go back to doing what we do best. We just lost our way a little bit over the 15 years. And so the refurbishment of um, YTOD, we borrowed a lot of money for that a number of years ago. It's never, ever, ever produced any energy. 280 million just sat there doing nothing. We've now paid off the loan um, and in September the 2nd, it'll start to be refurbished with the first seven megawatts on before the end of November. These are simple fixes. Ramu 1 at the start of last year had two machines running, now has four. 
So that's 41 megawatts of power coming just out of Ramu 1. Pounder had 4 megawatts, is now running at 8 consistently. Rauner is under refurbishment. We are doing everything we can to support the ADB work to build new hydropower in PNG and refurbish. This is not a simple thing to do uh, in terms of complexity of project management. And of course, as I said, the moment we go to market looking for contractors, there's obviously also the opportunists, opportunists who, um, who think of PNG power as some cesspool of corruption. And so they come running. And a lot of our time, honestly, far too much of our time is spent sharp elbows out defending ourselves. Distributed hydropower gas in the interim. Um, we would be on gas in Moresby now. Uh, we're still waiting for approvals for the new power project. But this switch um, is fundamental to us. Be the, between these two is about 250 million kina a year in profit uplift. Just those two initiatives. The third is distributed hydropower. We want to build right around the Highlands region around 10 small hydros, 5 to 20 megawatts. We want these to be owned by the local people and the provinces, and we want them to sell the power to PNG Power at less than 8 cents. We think this is a viable model. It's being developed now both on the Kiwis are developing the ownership structure and the Australians are helping us with the technical appraisal. And hybridised solutions, this means solar, battery and efficient diesels for isolated centres. We just talked about this, um, how we will achieve it. Uh, we're fairly lucky at PNG Power. We've been able to crowd in some amazing companies, institutions, bilaterals, multilaterals. Um, we call these our village of experts. Um, so if you look at Antura, that's the Tasmanian government, Hydro Tasmania. Um, they run both a utility as well as a cons hydro consultancy firm. Um, they're probably some of the best in the world. They are being paid for fully by the Tasmanian government as a grant to us. So even refurbishing these hydros doesn't need to cost us. Um, the World Bank, uh, we call it uh, Unmessing PNG Power, the Power Revenue and Reliability Improvement Program. It's a modest amount of money being borrowed from the World Bank. We hope government approves this sometime within the next month. We have a business improvement program with partners in performance who are fundamental to our rewiring exercise. The financial remediation and clash flow management is with Deloitte and the power infrastructure and connectivity program that Ganega talked about is focusing just on transmission and distribution and 60,000 new connections in the second round. We have the PEP partners, our family of funders is the Bank of South Pacific, export credit agencies from our neighbours and the Australian Fund for Infrastructure in the Pacific. The really fundamental thing that I'd like to leave um, PNG Power with is, is a company fueled by good governance. I think that if we are going to make our way back and stay back as, a, as an excellent utility to support the growth of this government and others to come, we really need to make sure that we've switched from being a poorly governed company to one fueled by good governance. By 2020, uh, just to give you an indication in terms of safety, the New Zealand government are partnering with us on a very comprehensive program from assessment through to implementation over the next four years on safety. Uh, on the POM grid, uh, it's 99% reliability. Wet season is coming up. Um, it will you know, hopefully last. Um, we're doing a lot of work to be weatherproof. Um, Douglas Maggio is our EGM for transmission and distribution. Uh, Dougie comes from Kaviang. I said he can't go home this Christmas, he has to stay um, in case there's another wet season like last year. But we're already achieving 99.2 rolling average for the year. The Ramu grid, we're at 94%. Just to give you an idea, in, um, these are not our stats, but um, Wafi Gulp, um, Hidden Valley, we were at 46% last March. So on the Ramu grid, we're at 94%. This is not because money is flooded in our door, it's because of partners like PNG Forest Products, Hidden Valley, Wafi Golpu, um, the Lay Chamber of Commerce, all sorts of people who we've had to club together. If you can think of PNG Power as being very cash poor, we've turned around our financial results 
77% difference between net profit at the end of the last six months of last year to the first six months of 2019. It's a pretty phenomenal effort. And it's not because people are driving new cars. We are still driving the same fleet that we bought in 2014. These staff are doing their absolute best because we've asked them, not because of false promises. And if they do the wrong thing, we fire them. And their boss gets a reasonably hard time in the public about all sorts of rubbish things, and they simply keep walking ahead. So I think we have really a jewel that we've just got to protect and look after to make sure that she reaches his back her full potential. And of course, um, we would like to see profits not turned into dividends to government, um, though that will be somebody else's decision, not mine. But we'd really like to see that, as I think some members of government do, translated into a lower tariff. And I notice Paulus, as commissioner from ICCC, is taking a picture of this. So um, I hope that we can, <laughs> I hope that this is exactly what we can deliver by 2020. And of course, double access to electricity. Thank you very much. Thank you.